And we are back <clears throat> with the fifth and the final segment of the GSMC Sports Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fourth, fifth segment, excuse me, we are going to go ahead and look at NBA's power rankings. And we're going to do that a little bit quicker than usual because we are a little bit low on time. And they, they released like, well, at the time I started the show, they released an hour ago. So I guess that's two hours ago. And I'm just going to pull them up. Give me one second real quick while I pull these up. And um, let me see. There we go. All right. So you guys can see the screen. And I didn't look at these. Um, this, this has been on this page for the longest time. I'm going to say that the Celtics are back up at number one. Because they, they honestly, they should be back at number one. And yeah, they are. Of course they are. Um, as we know, the Celtics, they are just the team to beat in the Eastern Conference, and they're the team to beat in the entirety of the NBA. And they got two big wins um, over the weekend. And, well, you know, one win you could argue was bigger than the other. The Wiz Beating the Wizards wasn't really that big of a deal, but beating the Timberwolves, you can argue that all that was a big deal. The game was close, but, of course, they ended up coming out on top. And the Cavs, the minute they ended up losing a game, I had a feeling that they were going to be dropped all the way down to um, uh, maybe second or third. But being ranked second makes total sense. Again, they have the best record in the NBA right now with only one loss. And after that one loss to the Boston Celtics, they continue to win. It makes total sense that the Celtics are ranked above the Cavs because they beat the Cavs. So I have really no problem with them dropping down to the two spot despite the fact that they're still able to win just not against the Celtics who have seemed to claim their spot as the best team in the Eastern Conference without being the best team in the Eastern Conference because as we know the record difference 17 and 1 that's better than um 14 and 3 but regardless the Celtics they were able to do that they were able to beat the only undefeated team they deserve to be at number one then Golden State, they dropped to number two. Makes total sense. As we know, they ended up losing to the Spurs over the weekend. And, I mean, even if they did not lose to the Spurs, I would not put this team over Cleveland right now based off of team record and based off of Steph's overall performance. And despite this, however, the Warriors, they've been very competent as a team, which is something that I did not expect. They are number one in the Western Conference right now. Um, they beat the Pelicans, they beat the Hawks, they beat the Clippers, they lost to the Clippers, so really two bad losses over um, last week, and two losses that really shouldn't have happened, and that's a big reason why they dropped from two to three. Now, in my opinion, I don't think they're better than the Thunder, because the Thunder, they are suffering from injuries, in fact, they're suffering from a lot of them. They did not play over this weekend, which does not really... Um, help their cause in these power ranking debates so that's probably why they did not move from their number four spot which is you know below the Warriors but again this team is incredibly injured despite the fact that they've been injured they have still been able to win several games so I don't really think that they should be ranked below the Warriors I think the Thunder are a much better team than the Warriors and the fact that they're still able to win despite running this small ball lineup most of the time, um, I still think like, you know, when they're healthy, they are a better team than Golden State. But, you know, obviously, I can't really say about I can't really speak on that now because it's all hypothetical. And um, just, you know, my speculations just on how this team has been playing, but having them at four, now I can't really complain about that. I would just put them at three. Now, Houston, they stay at five, um, respectfully. So they did have one bad loss over the weekend against the Blazers after beating the Blazers. But again, 12 and six record right now. And they right, they hold the third spot in the Western Conference. This is literally like 2016. Like this is the, it's literally 2016 with the top teams in um, each of the conferences. The Cavs are number one, Celtics are number two, similar to 2016 when the Cavs and the Celtics, they ruled the Eastern Conference and the, the Golden State Warriors, they are the best team, similar to how they were the best team in 2016, as well as in 2017 and 18 and Houston, they were up there um, as well back then. And the Thunder in 2016, you know, with Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, they were also up there as one of the better teams. So it's like, it's really weird how this season's been playing out so far. Um, the Dallas Mavericks, they move up to number seven despite the fact that they ended up losing a couple of games. And 
a big reason for that is because they were able to win against the Denver Nuggets despite not having Luka Doncic and also beating OKC. So I guess it makes a little bit of sense. I would not have put them at number set, at number six. I would have put the Lakers there, but again, the Lakers did suffer two really bad losses over the weekend, mainly one to Denver, and then the other one to um, the Orlando Magic without Paolo Banchero. So Denver being ranked over LA, it makes sense. They move up all the way to seven, despite the fact that they did end up losing a couple games last week. But again, this is the Denver Nuggets. Now, I think they get a little bit too much credit for beating the Lakers because it's like they just play unbelievable basketball against them, but they should be ranked over the Lakers. Now, Clippers, they should not be ranked over the Lakers. I don't know why they're ranked over them, but again, being 11-7 and seven without Kawhi Leonard is very impressive, and they do have one more win than the Lakers right now, but they also have one more loss against the Lakers right now. So Orlando Magic being ranked over the Lakers right now, I guess that makes sense as well, mainly because the Lakers ended up losing to them, but... Um, jumping all the way from 14 to 9, I think that's a bit much. Memphis, they stay at 10. I don't think the Lakers are worse than the Memphis Grizzlies. I think the Lakers are better than them. But again, they also did not have John Morant for a couple of games. So they also did not have John Morant against the, um, the Bulls in this one, but they still were able to win. So I guess that makes a little bit of sense. The Knicks being at number 11, that makes some sense jumping all the way up from 13 to 11. Um, they've been playing really, really well recently, aside from that one loss to the Jazz, which just was not good. They're going to play the Nuggets later on tonight at 9 o'clock. Um, they did beat the Suns, although it was without Kevin Durant. They beat the Wizards, and they beat the Nets um, twice. But again, all of that is taken with a grain of salt, considering how they ended up losing to the Jazz later on. Now, the Lakers, they dropped from 9 all the way down to 12. Not a really bad spot for them, but again, I don't think that the... Grizzlies should be over them. I also don't think that the Clippers should be over them. I think they'd sort of jump the gun with those rating, rankings, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Spurs, they move all the way up from 19 to 13. I think that's a little bit premature, but again, they did just beat the Warriors. So right now they're um, above 500 team for a first time in a while. Um, Victor, he has not been, you know, shooting the ball very well, but the team has been able to get it done. Chris Paul, I mean, the Chris Paul effect is real. Last time this team, last year, this team would have been one of the worst in the NBA. But with Chris Paul on the roster, they actually have a winning record. And it really shows just the value that Chris Paul brings to the roster. Minnesota, they drop all the way down to 14 after being six. That makes a lot of sense. I was expecting them to be dropped down a lot. Um, the Bucks, they move all the way up 10 spots. Um, I guess that was bound to happen given the fact that they were they were winning a couple of games now, and it doesn't seem like the team is playing nearly as bad as they were in the beginning of the season. But again, they still have Doc Rivers and Darvin Ham as their coach. They are not going to do anything in the postseason. Phoenix, they move down from sixteen from twelve to sixteen, which makes sense because again, they don't have Kevin Durant, and when you don't have Kevin Durant, your team is going to be worse. Um, the Miami Heat, they end up moving up one spot a little bit. No, actually, you know what? Not really much that I need to say about that. Kings, they move down. Makes sense. They've suffered from disappointing losses. The Pacers, they move down as well. Again, another team that's suffered disappointing losses. Portland moves up. They've had some stunning victories, so that makes sense why they move up. The Nets, they stay where they are. Makes total sense as well. The Bulls, they move up a little bit by winning a couple of surprising games, so that also makes a little bit of sense. Hawks, they move down. Makes sense because they lost in some disappointments. Charlotte, they move down because while LaMelo's been playing very well, the team has still ended up losing. The Pistons, they move down from 17 to 25. I knew that was going to happen eventually. This Pistons team is not... Um, as good as they think they are and the record I mean it's not really good but again it's anything is better than the record that they had last year and the Raptors they move up 26 from 28 so that makes sense Philly they should still be one of the worst teams in the NBA they should be at number 29 or at number 30 but again Washington they hold that 30 spot they're going to hold that 30 spot and the Pelicans, moving them at 29, I guess that makes a little bit of sense, but I would have much rather them be ranked below the Jazz. Um, but really, that's all that I have to say for the power rankings. More or less, they, they make sense, but I know this isn't going to be how the league looks towards the end of the season. Not sure about the 76ers, though. I'm pretty sure they're going to stay where they are. But that's all that I have 
for um, this fifth segment. That's it for the show. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Sports Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. As usual, we love to hear what you guys have to say during the show, whether you guys have a hot take, whether you guys have a burning question, or anything that you've just been dying to share. We're all ears. You can use Super Chat. You just click on the dollar sign below the chat box, or you can use the link displayed below the ticker to send in your comments and or donations that way. Um, gsmcpodcast.net is the um, link below every single ticker on every show segment Um, really helps the show makes it much more interactive between myself and you guys that's all that i really have today on this final segment thank you so much for tuning in and that's all that i have on this podcast i am your host nelson and as always take care Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to.